everyone. I feel like I'm on a cruise ship. You are. Drinks are coming. Like this is the Latitude Lounge. I love a good Latitude Lounge. What's a Latitude Lounge? And welcome to help with, I have to introduce you, Oscar. Oh, okay. sorry about that. Welcome to help with Natalie Cuomo. I'm here with amazing comedian Oscar Aiden. Hello. Thank you for pronouncing my name right. Really? What do yeah, people say? You'd be surprised at how many times I've done something and people are like, how do you say your last name? And I was like, bitch, we've been friends for 15 years. Like, how do you not know how to say my name that, already? Yeah, that's a, it's a nice last name to say. It's Wait, classic. Wait, thank you very much. No, you don't know what a, a Latitudes Lounge is? Is that like a United Club? No, well, well, it's, it's, have you ever been on a cruise? No. Okay, you've got to go on a cruise. Don't go on a cruise during spring break. Ugh. But go on a cruise mm -hmm. and make sure you do like the adult one if you can. I mean, sometimes they're a little oldish, but like do the adult ones. And they have something called the Latitudes Lounge where they'll do like jazz and maybe like a, oh. like, you know, like a bingo or like, you know, afternoon Tanzanite shopping spree. I love a good Latitudes Lounge. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It is. It's, it's so much fun. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, because I'm also a 90-year-old woman on the inside. Do you feel, how are you a 90-year-old woman? Oh, my God. I'm an old soul. I know that for a fact. Like, I'm an old soul. Like, I, <laughs> I get cranky very fast. Me too. Yeah. And I get hangry very fast. I, I honestly, And I don't like children that much. You don't like children? <laughs> I do. I like children but not like an overabundance of children. Ugh, well, I'll tell you why. I went to uh, I went to Arizona. My friends are like, oh, let's do something special for your birthday. And I was like, great. So we go to Arizona. The trip overall was a wonderful time. They probably won't hear this. But the trip overall was a wonderful time. And I said, all I want to do, the main goal of this whole vacation thing is I want to sit by the pool and relax. That's all I want. I want to sit by the pool, get some sun, and lay by the pool. And they're like, great. So we did a little bit of hiking. We did a little bit of psychic reading. And on the last Ooh. day of the vacation, they're like, we're going to go to a resort, and it's going to be amazing. Now, this resort was stunning. Stunning, okay? However, where do we sit? Next to the fucking kiddie pool. Uh. I was like, okay, trip ruined. Why couldn't, oh, we, we'd have to move seat. That's crazy. I was like, I don't want to be, listen, I'm glad people have them. Thank, good, good for you. Enjoy, I hope you have a good time with them. You know, let them be your internal clock. But I, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It does suck when you're staying somewhere and there's just kids running rampant. You know, I was just in Arizona. I came back yesterday. Oh, really? Where? Yeah, in Phoenix. Oh, my God. That's fa Where Phoenix? Um, oh, we were doing the House of Comedy Phoenix. Oh, well, how was it? It was really fun. Yeah. It was really, it was a really cool club. Yeah. And I like Phoenix. Yeah. But it's a little... I like the weather because it's very Palm oh, Springs. It was my first time there. Oh, really? Yeah, the, first of all, the condo was so nice. There were like pools and hot tubs. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I love swimming. And I think I have seasonal depression. I think like if I'm not outside, I get upset, but I hate being cold. So. I know it's hard. It is hard. Yeah. It is very hard. Yeah. I, uh, I was in Phoenix and it was a very nice, it was a nice place. I liked, you know, I liked the, the resort. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be near kids. And you know what's so funny is that my boyfriend and I, we went to uh, the National in Miami. We went to Miami for New Year's Eve, and the weather was perfect, and we stayed at the National. I want to give a shout-out to the National Hotel in Miami Beach. Amazing. <laughs> like, literally the best adult hotel I've ever been. And not one of those, like, sleazy, you know, nasty, you know, hookers running around. No offense to the hookers. But like, <laughs> it wasn't, it was very upscale, very nice. It's a, it's a smadgens, it's a smadgens uh, on the expensive side. However, if you want to treat yourself to a nice hotel in South Beach when it's not spring break at an adult only hotel, the national all the way. Well, okay, number one, I thought you meant the band at first. What? <laughs> the National. Oh, God, what's the National Band? 
Oh, well, because in my last episode was with Isabel Hagen, and she played music with the band The National, and I was like, this is crazy. This band, this band is just coming up in my life over and over again. Yeah, I don't know what that is. It's like an indie band. Um, anyway, what do you think makes a good hotel? We travel a lot, like all the time. I will say attentive front staff. Mm, okay. Okay. Uh, I like a good fast elevator service. Yeah. Okay. I like a pool that is semi-heated. And I like uh, I like hard pillows. Really? The yeah. pillows matter. Oh, the pillows matter. If I get to a hotel and the pillows are soft, I'm automatically <laughs> like, well, this was a waste of time. I don't want a floppy pillow. I don't want I a can't. pillow that I can't, because you know what happens? If I have a floppy pillow, I get a headache. Really? Yep. If I get a floppy <laughs> pillow. You sound like my father. <laughs> uh, see? I'm an old soul. <laughs> I honestly, well, first of all, A doesn't matter to you if it's outdoor or indoor pool. Uh, as long as it's heated. Right. Yeah. Now, the, the pillow situation, it reminded me, because a floppy pillow means it's been used too much. No, I think they just put soft pillows in. Like, my boyfriend and I went to Caesars in Atlantic City. Okay. And the pillows were so soft. Caesars is a nice hotel. They could do with a little few upgrades right. in some of the services area. We asked for a late checkout. Listen, I know, not a given, but I asked nicely. Okay. And I was like, do you have a late checkout? And she's like, I can give you an hour checkout. An extended hour for $50. Yeah. 50, 50 dollars for one hour. I'm good. No, thank you. That's how it was at the Rose. I stayed at the Roosevelt in LA and I told them I want the extra hour. Yeah. And someone didn't pass the memo along and they were like in my room an hour early. And yeah. I was like, oh, and then I learned it was 75 extra for an hour and then I just left. Yeah. Really? An hour? An hour? An hour in the room. Not everybody asks for late checkout. Do they? Is, uh, do I you, think people are shy about it. Do people here ask for I don't Do you guys ask, do ask, ask for late checkout? I don't. I mean, I do. I shouldn't say I don't, but I do. I like to. So, Oscar, I, first of all, you, your presence brings me joy. You are like an energetic, I wonderful person. That. Thank you very much. And you also are the only person that my fiance Dan has decided is part of the groom's party so far. <laughs> I'm very honored. I I love Dan and I love you. And you know, I've always been one of those people that's like, I like Dan because he's genuinely nice. He is but it's also honest. Yes. Which is I think part of his personality. But you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> I love you, John Amy, for saying that. <laughs> but it is part of his, like, he has to be brutally honest. But I like that, you know, the one thing that I enjoy about a lot of comics is that there is a genuine niceness. Really? Whereas a lot of people, a lot of comics, I'm not going to name names, but there are a lot of comics who have this, like, chip on their shoulder. Yeah. And I'm like, for what? Right. For what? You don't, like, you don't have any reason to have a chip on your shoulder. Even the biggest comics, they can have a chip on their shoulder. Do they need to? No. Yeah. But some of these comics, I'm like, okay, you've been on TV once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Really? A chip on your shoulder? Being on TV now does not matter anymore. Like being on, like having, it does. Please don't quit. D don't quote me on that. It does matter, but it's not the end all be all. It's the, uh, the amount of eyes that are on you, which you can. Right accomplish yourself if you really exactly. put your energy into it. Right. Yeah. And so going back to like hold, you know, going back to like Dan and you and a lot of other comics that I see, there's a genuine nice like niceness. Like there's a genuine feeling of like, hey, how are you doing? I'm asking because I care. Yeah. Versus, hey, how you doing? And it's just like you're asking because you don't know what else to say. It is kind of like an intuitive thing you can pick up about a person. Yeah. Not everyone can, but there are definitely comics where you're like, all right, I know that this is a situation ship. Yeah. <laughs> well, fun fact, just so you know, I am an ordained minister. Really? Yeah. So, okay, 
have you ever officiated a wedding? No, I have not officiated a wedding. What What motivated you to become an ordained minister? The free parking. What do you mean the free parking? Where do you get free parking? <laughs> Am I just dumb? <laughs> No, jump! Listen, 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 listen. You can't, you can't put this out there. This is a secret. Okay. But when you become an ordained minister <laughs> online, as a good Christian person would, uh -huh. there is a parking pass that comes with it <laughs> that allows you to park. Where? That allows you to park. That allow read between the lines, Natalie. <laughs> that allows you to park. Okay, great. Next subject. <laughs> yes, I am an ordained minister, and uh, you know, I I will say this. I'm I was, so worried that I don't get it. Like, it's I'm okay. So don't worry concerned. about it. Don't worry about it. What do I? What do I? It's okay. Don't worry about it. Shh, <laughs> we'll talk about it later. You can park a parking pass. A parking pass. Park. In New York City? What is this an innuendo for? <laughs> I love that you think it's an innuendo. You genuinely mean they can park? Yeah. You can free? park anywhere in New York City. Do you have a car? No. I feel like someone is going to come out of the walls and be like, it's a prank. Listen, I know some of your listeners and viewers are going to be like, how dare you, you heathen and unholy Christian. But, you know. Wow, interesting. So, are, are you looking to... Officiate? Yeah. Nah. No. I mean, if someone asked me to, I would. Right. You know, I would do it. I want to get the license just so whenever people are getting married, I can make it about me and say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You two are getting married? Hello! I'm in my moment. I mean, I'm an ordained minister. <laughs> and by that, I mean like online, and I pay $47.99. <laughs> I'll show up wearing white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but when Dan asked me, I thought that was really, um, I thought that was really over here. Yeah. I know, but I, I'm moving it around. You're I'm fine. shaking. You're fine. Uh, I thought that was really not, I thought that was really yeah. special, you know, because I've never been in a wedding party. I've been to weddings. I've only been I to two. I, I tend to stray away from weddings because, you know. So I swear. $250 gift. Why? For what? I'm paying for the dinner. That's what they tell you. You pay as much as the dinner would cost when you have your wedding. You know what? Next time. Have your dinner at a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Fuck out of here. I shit. still, I've only been to two weddings in my entire life, but I'm planning a wedding. It's so hard because... Wait, you are? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You're engaged. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you guys were engaged. That's... That was the conversation. Yeah, I know. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been trying to, I've been looking at venues. And the prices are so crazy that I'm like, this can't be, but... When are you looking for your wedding? The ideal day would be July 14th, 2024. And do you have, well, yeah, because it's prime wedding season. Yeah. Well, it's a year from now. We're looking at our first venue on, on Thursday. What is it? The venue? Yeah. It's, it's this hotel in Montclair, New Jersey. Ooh. It's very pretty, yeah. Very bougie. Originally, I wanted rustic, but. Your barnyard kind of way? I want barnyard so bad, but barnyard's actually the most expensive. Why don't you just reach out and see if any of your listeners have a barn? I feel like I'd get murdered in those barns. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot of I'm <laughs> No, it's just a joke. No, I know. But, okay, so what's your theme? And how many people are at the wedding? Okay, 150 people. That's a lot of fucking people. So I agree, He his family is so huge. I only have... The people I have related to me that are alive, blood related, I have four. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> it's like I have my mother, my dad, and that's about it. Right. I'm not inviting anybody. I mean, I'll have like maybe two friends. Are you Are you getting married? Oh, I don't know. How long have you been with your boyfriend? Two years. Oh, I thought you guys were together for like ever and ever oh, and ever. Oh God, no. God, no. So you guys live together though, right? No. We don't live together. What? Yeah. 
we um, like it that way. Really? Well, I also use my apartment as my podcast studio. Yeah. So if I didn't have a podcast, it'd be a lot easier to give up my apartment. Also, I live in Chelsea. I'm not giving up my apartment. Right. Do you like having the space? Yes. Yeah. I love my boyfriend, but we need we need our own space. Like we would need a large flat in order to like exist. Spread out. Yeah, because like I would I would like I would go crazy because sometimes he gets up at four o'clock in the morning. And he'll make coffee, and of course, it's one of those old stoves. So it goes tick, 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 tick. And of course, you know, he's old, so it takes him How a old while. Is he? He's like 50. Okay. I'm just kidding. But, you know, it takes him a while. You know, it's like tick, tick, tick. And he's dyslexic, so he doesn't he's know where to turn, you know? Too. So it's like tick, yeah. tick, tick, tick. And then that wakes me up. So. Wow. Yeah. You know. He needs, yeah. But he's, he's great. You know, it, it's it's a good relationship. We have our ups and downs, and we have you know, but we it's a it's an overall fun relationship. Like we definitely have fun together. That's important. Yeah, we make fun of each other a lot. What? When was your like? When did you start dating? Were you always like into uh -oh, relationships? Yes. <laughs> I said to Dan, no. I was like. You know, what do you think I should talk to Oscar about? And he said, well, you should ask him about that time he fucked a cop. He has a joke about it. Oh, yeah. I was like, wow. <laughs> I don't know how. I'll <laughs> yeah, I had, to, I had sex with an NYPD officer. Tell I mean, can you, did you know he was an officer? Yeah, he pulled up in his cop car. You're kidding me. No, pulled up in his cop car, parked right across the street from my building. Of course, you know, in the fire hydrant, in front of the fire no, hydrant. No, he did not. Sure did. Was this a booty call? Yeah, a long time ago, though, yeah. prior to the pandemic. And uh, pulled up, cop car, came into the building, came into my apartment. Came into you? No. Came in, ew, gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> uh, big, burly NYPD officer. And then, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I tell people, I don't want to get too graphic because, you know, Disney audiences. So, like, let's just say I'm up here and he's down here and I'm playing the flute horizontally and <laughs> horizontal and uh and then uh, as I, I hear this sound and I look up and it's him sucking his thumb no yeah and then in that moment I was like yeah it's time to deep deep on the police wow yeah that's my joke I try sometimes to say deep thumb the police <laughs> But that's so hacky. <laughs> de-thumb the police. I was like, it's time to de-thumb the police. <laughs> oh my god, how yeah. long was he at the hydrant? That's kind of what's bothering me the most about this story. I mean, it lasted all about maybe 10 minutes. The whole he came whole and left again. within 10 minutes? Yeah, because I wasn't I was like, can you just... After I, I mean, I finished, obviously, but it was like, can you help yourself along? Wow. Yeah. I, I feel like, okay, A, or did he offer you the handcuffs at any point? No. 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 And you wouldn't want, you would want fresh ones. That's how I feel like when any time I was with someone who had a sex toy, if they already had it, I'm not using it. I mean, he could have, he could have bought the uniform at a Ricky's <laughs> and I still would have been turned on. Like it has nothing <laughs> Like that's how sad I am. Like any uniform, well, I'm, 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 I'm in. What's the hottest uniform I'm going to wear? FedEx. Really? Oof. I know. Mine's my my, is that legally blonde? No, but do you want to know something? It's so hot that not this past Halloween, but the past Halloween, my boyfriend dressed up as a FedEx driver. Really? Yeah. With the shorts? Yep. The and shorts I was like, are. That is, uh, yeah, it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oof, I remember, I you know what, I remember we were standing outside the stand and I was like, Oscar, I don't know what hot is. Do you remember this conversation? <laughs> I remember a lot of our conversations, Natalie. <laughs> yeah, I remember a lot. Oh, that was funny. That was, I, you know, I like, I like our hangs at the stand. I love, the stand is, is an amazing place. I feel like uh, we both host there, we get to, you get to meet so many people. Yeah, I get to. I'm hosting there tonight. Me too. What time? Nine. Oh, I'm hosting the ten. Yeah. What do you? I, what do you feel like you get the most out of hosting? Like I feel like 
the thing that sexually I sexually harassing men. Sexually harassing men. I feel like I have that moment, like, like that first moment when you go on stage is is so like before the show even starts, and you're just like, hi. It's, oh yeah, the air is so. It's raw. such a like. It's such a moment you always have to push through for me. Like when I first get up there, they just did the announcements, and I'm like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like that raw energy where yeah. everybody's like, yeah, make yeah. us laugh, bitch. Right? Yeah, and I like that. If the pressure's on. I like the pressure. But then when you're close all the time, then you, and then I'm like on the road headlining this past weekend, I was like, this is nice. It is nice, <laughs> This right? is really something else. Do you guys have an opener then? Um, we'll usually have like a local host, and yeah. then, yeah, we'll... So you guys split your time, or what do you do? You do 15 or 20, and then he does 15, 20, or what? Uh, we usually used to do 35. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's fun. We both get... It is sometimes hard to follow the other person doing 35, but it does make you stronger. Yeah, I bet. So. Yeah. You know, that's a good idea. And the host is 50, and that's a 90-minute show. Right? Yeah. How's that a 90-minute show? 85. But you have to, people, you have to factor in people. Uh, you can't, it, nothing can ever be precise. I love you so much. I was like, how are we doing this math right now? What are we, what, where's this math coming from? What do you think um, the best advice you ever received is? Oh, the best advice I ever received is. Hustle until you don't have to introduce yourself. Really? Yeah. Wow, who gave you that advice? Uh, I saw it on Instagram. Wow, I like it. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. And that just kind of keeps reminding me, like, hustle until when I walk into a room, I don't have to introduce myself. Wow. And that people will just automatically know who I am. Wow. Household name. That's what you inevitably want in your career. And that is not You want to be a thing. household name. There are a lot of very successful comedians make a living doing it. Yep. You know, big hardcore comedy fans know who they are. But being a household name is like, That's there are very be, few people. Yeah. Like, there are, I mean, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Amy Schumer, you know. Yeah. These are household names, but, you know. And one at one point in my career, I probably will just start going by, like, Oscar. <laughs> like Cher and Madonna. I'll just I go like by, like, name. Oscar. Oh, it'd be fun to be the only Natalie in comedy. There's You're only, like, one of, what, two or three? Yeah, but I, I can't go by just Natalie. Nah. Nah. People get too comfortable and they call me Nat, and I'm like... <laughs> if I haven't told you a secret, then we can't... Be on Nat level. Wait, can I call you Nat? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if I like Nat though. Nat's very light. But I do like it though. It's short and it sweet. It depends like what, what the mood is. What yeah. do you think the worst advice you've ever received is? The worst advice is it's not that bad if you use your teeth. Really? <laughs> when was that spoken? I think when I, after I first came out of the closet, I was trying very hard. And I think someone knew that I was putting a lot of effort in, and they were like, it's okay if, you know, you use your teeth. Wow. A little bit. They wanted? No, but like they knew, you know, they knew. It was also quite, they knew. I feel, so when I was, like, the first blowjob I ever gave, I was, like, I was 13. And the guy. Are you allowed to say this on air? I guess so. Okay. He was um, also in ninth grade with me. And it was whatever. And then after he told everyone, Natalie's a biter in two ways. She copies my music taste and also she bites. <sighs> mm-hmm. Isn't that terrible? Do you want to get revenge? I, I... Or has he gotten fat and revenge took its course already? Uh, I feel like it was one of those things where his, yeah, he, his existence is just 
revenge itself. Yeah. Like I like it's he wasn't a person that I that I would ever be like, oh he's doing well. So but yeah, a biter in two ways. I'll never forget that. And I was like, I didn't know. I didn't know that it's I was okay. I didn't know I was a scraper. Yeah, well, you know. When you first start, you're just like, uh, I have no idea. There's, I have no, you have no idea what's going on. I remember I thought blowjobs, and I thought blowjobs, there's those books, TTYL, TTFN. They were books that were all written in, um, in as if it was like an AIM conversation. I read these in middle school, like, at, at these books, and there was a girl, she gave a blowjob for the first time in this, like, teen novel, and I didn't understand. I thought blow, blow jobs included blowing, and I was very confused. Then I was like, sucking dick sounds so much better than blowing someone because at least you that didn't makes watch sense. Video? No, I didn't watch porn at all. It was like weird. I masturbated from a young age, but I didn't watch porn. I, I don't ever watch. I've never jerked off to porn. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why, because I, I feel like when I watch porn, I'm like, ew, like, these other people. I mean, I watch, I don't watch, I used to watch porn, and then I stopped watching porn, because, you know, it just sets a lot of unrealistic expectations. Yeah. Yeah, you know? Not because of the men. I mean, please, I could obtain some of those men. They're not that bright. But, but just because of the scenery. Where would it, oh, it would just be in random places. Well, you know, sometimes they'll have like this frat house, guys gone wild, and I'm like, this frat house is decorated in Clayton Vale. Like, no frat house has it's ever had, you know, track lighting and sconces. I honestly have never, I. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the D. It's not. It's not done right. <laughs> no, this cannot be. Why does this look like a Jonathan Adler house? I I feel like there are a lot of women that don't watch porn. Maybe a lot of women do though. I don't understand. I know that. a lot of women who watch gay porn. Really, that makes more sense to me though. Because if why? Why would you watch that? Why? I mean, it's. I guess it's because like I watch straight porn. But the thing is, though, is that... I think it's just the level of... Do you, like, do women there. watch gay porn because of, like, the storylines? Is that it? Are there better storylines in gay porn? I don't know. You tell me. I've watched porn twice in my life, and it was both, like, with a friend that you're like, let's check this out. And it's really just the most off... Watching porn in a non-sexual way with a friend is so awkward. Like, as, as you know, maybe you're, like, in college or high school, and you're just kind of like... Oh, interesting. Have you ever... You're like, no. <laughs> yeah, but we usually laugh because we know the person. Oh, I guess we're at that point. Yeah, we usually laugh and be like, oh, girl. <laughs> we didn't know you were like that. <laughs> Dirty bitch. Do you ever, have you ever been on like any, anyone's OnlyFans that you know? Me? Yeah. Nah, I don't let people record. No, have you ever, like, looked? Oh, on OnlyFans? Mm -hmm. uh, I, like, when it first came out, and, like, if a, if a comic tells me that they're, like, on it or something like that, I'll consider it, but then I'm like, I'm not paying. I know, I know. It's like, I want you to, I want, I want, you know. to A free preview? Yeah, I want to support them, but I don't want to support them in that way. Right. But, like, I like a preview. <laughs> I mean, a lot of if you if you think about it, a lot of people have a free preview on uh, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. I feel like I I it's really just turned I into hate porn. it. I really hate Twitter. I it's hate when either political or porn. It's upsetting. Yeah, it's, it's not dead. it's not fun anymore. It's just either all political or all porn. And the people on there just have no souls. Yeah, they should just call it pee pee. Yeah, they should just call it PP from now on <laughs> for politics and porn. It's true, politics and porn. Pretty yeah. much all that. Yeah, I feel like there's a whole sector of dudes that that's all they care about. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I watch it a little bit. Yeah. They got some good stuff on there. Really? Yeah. I don't know what it is that I do, I just if I see porn, I'm like, ugh. Oh, uh, well, I think I'm, it's because it's like all I ever had mm. in order to like you know see what was going on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it's 
trial, but I, I feel like all of the things that I did from not watching porn were very embarrassing, but that's the best way to learn. Well, no, hands-on experience is the best way to learn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hands-on, embarrassment. Well, you try not to have embarrassment. <sighs> yeah. So, are you fr you're from the Midwest. I'm from Chicago. Okay. Is that considered the Midwest? Yes. What was that? We still say pop. Oh my God! When people they say that in Ohio too. Yeah. Do you want? Do you guys have any pop? <laughs> so you mean daddy? Yeah. Jim, or they'll be like, "Do you have soda?" And soda automatically is like Coca Cola or Pepsi. Really? It's I never... remember growing up, and we used for all the oldies out there. I remember RC. RC Cola. RC Cola. Yeah. There was, I don't know if that was Pepsi, but it was Coca Cola and then RC Cola. It makes I remember no we sense used to, to me. Yeah, we used to drink that. In bed, everybody, if you went to the store, if you went to like a restaurant, they'd be like, like, can I get a soda? And they'd be like, all right. And it automatically is like Coca Cola. When did you move to New York? I moved to New York a few years ago. A few things I don't tell people. <laughs> really? My age. Uh huh. And one, how long I've been doing something, or when I moved here. So never. T here's my here's my here's my advice to people, to your listeners. Okay, N two things: never reveal your age, and never reveal how long you've been doing something, because people will judge you either way. So when people ask me how long I've been doing comedy, I say for a few years. Because if I would have said two years, they would have been jealous. If I would have said eight years, they would have been like, and that's all you've done? So never, ever tell people how old you are and how long you've been doing something. That's the one thing I've learned. I feel that people always ask me how long I've been doing stand-up because they want to do some mental equation in their head. Right. Like, it's never just in a genuine, hey, how long have you been doing comedy? I'm, I'm just curious. It's yeah. never just genuine curiosity. It it's never always, is. Always some weird mental equation of them trying to understand their future or yeah. why you have something. Right. And whenever anyone asks how long I've been doing stand-up, I, I'm just, I'm, I tell them, but I do Don't feel tell like, them. really? Don't tell them. Just say I've been doing it for a few years. And if they ask, well, how many years? We're like, I've been doing it for a few years. And then you go, you know what, you, you know how I always shut them down? I'd be like, why do you need to know how many? <laughs> For what? Yeah. Why do you need to know how many? How are you, you, what, what judgment are you going to be make based on the number I give you? I know. No one's like going up to Amy Schumer being like, so how many years have you been doing stand? Like, yeah, they'll just, do it in an interview or something like yeah, that. You know, if she's not, doing like a, a lifetime interview. But, you know, some of the new comics... Yeah. They like to ask, and I'm like, for what? It's like a dick measuring contest. Yeah. That, like, we're like, we don't even... Don't worry, I'll always come out on top. Yeah. Yeah. I feel that. So, but you feel the same way about... Uh, don't, don't ask. Moving to New York, you feel that about, too. What? Like, you don't want to say when you move to New York. I don't need to. I like that. No, nope, I don't need to. I've been here for a while. I want to talk to you about this. So, you're good at setting boundaries. I mean, that's... I... I, you know what, I recently have learned how to set boundaries. What's your advice for setting boundaries? I find that to be very difficult for myself, for other people, saying no, saying, I don't feel like telling you without making it awkward. You know, um, you're able to say, yeah, I keep that to myself, but it's not, a lot of people would make it awkward in refusing to answer a question, or not refusing to answer a question, but like deciding they don't want to share information. You know, it's been hard, because I, for a long time, did not know how to set boundaries. Yeah. I just didn't know how to say no, or, you know, I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to remove myself from situations. And the number one thing I can say is, what helped me is having a therapist. And being able to talk out situations. And she would say, well, how would you do that differently? What would you have done differently? Well, I would have said no, or I would have taken myself out of this equation. And she would have been like, okay. Mm -hmm. Then take yourself out of the equation. You know, and so it's learning that in moments where I don't want to do something, 
or I don't feel like it, just saying no. And I think I started that when I had a friend. I love him to bits. We had the best time together. We had some of the best time going out, but playing a sport together was awful because he is a horrible person when it comes to playing a sport. He is nasty. He's a great person overall, but he, when it comes to playing the sport, he is a, a narcissistic cunt. <laughs> and I always had wanted to play the sport, and whenever we would play the sport together, it would just be awful. Uh. And I, I learned to just be like, I'm going to remove myself. And what's interesting is as I removed myself, I noticed our friendship kind of grew apart. We still keep in contact. And I think whenever we used to, we would go out and it would be so much fun. We'd have the best fucking time going out because we would just, we wouldn't give a shit. We'd have a great time. But when it came to the sport, it's really what was detriment. Right. And I had to learn to set the boundary and say, I'm going to remove myself from this situation because I don't want to feel like that anymore. I don't want to be treated like shit just because I'm not as good as someone else in a sport. And I'll tell you this, gays will make you feel like shit. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. How so? In, because they're very competitive. Mm -hmm. They've got to like make up somehow for this internal need for not fitting in when they were a child or some shit like that. So they take it out and they become a, a, a bitch in sports. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? Oh, God, yeah. I love volleyball. I love volleyball. But gays have ruined volleyball for me. Really? They just oh, are nasty yeah. if you're not ruined good? Or what they, they have do? ruined the sport because they're not fun. They're very judgmental. The, and I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> bitching right now because I'm letting out some of this. But they, are, they have ruined volleyball because they are a bitch. Everybody's got this attitude like they're about to go play in the Olympics. And I'm like, sweetheart, you are playing in the seventh floor of a high school gymnasium where the ball hits the ceiling because the ceiling is 20 feet above the ground. This is not professional volleyball. <laughs> Unless you are making money from playing, you can drop the attitude. I always tell people, yeah. unless you're making good, unless you can make a living off of what you do, you can drop the attitude. That's true. That is That's true. my number. I, I hate people who like have this attitude. And I was like, sweetheart, you are not making a living off of this. You are losing money. Your return of investment financially is you're going into debt. <laughs> yeah, but somehow sure. you have the attitude. Yeah. For what? Yeah. For what? Friendship breakups are hard. Yeah. You know, I've noticed that one of the things I'm also learning with my therapist is expectations mm. and I think for the longest time in my life and I'm sorry that this is getting a little therapy but for the longest time is I had these expectations expectations that my friends would always be there expectations that my friends would always help me expectations that you know the line at Starbucks isn't going to be long, the expectation that, you know, the ride is going to be a lot smoother and there isn't going to be traffic, expectations that everything was going to go smoothly in my life. And it doesn't. And maybe that was a little narcissistic and a little bit of a, you know, a little bit stupid on my part and maybe a little naive. But what happened is, is I leaned into those expectations so hard that whenever those expectations didn't meet what I was looking for, I would automatically go into this, well, life is shitty, woe is me. Versus now where I am learning to live in a level where there are going to be ups and there are going to be downs, but I can only expect what's, I can, like, I can only expect the best or worst out of me. I can expect things, right. right? Yes, I can expect that, you know, I can expect that when I walk outside, are there going to be meteors? No. There's not going to be a comet or a meteor, no. I can expect that, right? But 
if I get to work and the elevator isn't working, that's my expectations. Now, that's a minor expectation, but I also realize that my expectation that my friends could help me through things that they're not familiar with mentally is something I had to learn. Like, I need a therapist for some of the things. Right. I mean, you, this is, you're, you make me want to go back to therapy because you just seem like so self-aware. I, I, I love it. I, uh, listen, it took me a lot of therapists to find the one that I like. That's what I was, th like, that's, I feel that, um, setting, setting boundaries and realizing that some friends don't need to be in your life or that, no. I always felt that, um, I had too high expectations of friendships, but and I would always be like really disappointed. I felt like because like I I would give a lot. Of, I don't know how to be like normal friends with someone. I can either be like your best friend or yeah. like your pal. Right. But I don't know how to have like normal friends. Yeah. So I feel like I'll give a lot, and then when it's not reciprocated, I feel really let down. Even though because I, I don't we have those expectations that our friends are gonna reciprocate yeah. in the same way that we are. But I have to remember that not everybody is like me. And they reciprocate in different ways. Right. And, and it's it feels like a rejection when you're expecting something that they don't give you, but they right. didn't know you were expecting it. Right. And then now is that I don't have to deal with the rejection if I just know that I shouldn't expect it. Like, I tried out for gay volleyball. It was stupid of me to expect that I'll most likely get picked. I didn't get picked. Yeah. And then I really got ang like I got angry about that. And then my therapist was like, well, first of all, let's think about this. Why on earth are you putting yourself into a situation where people obviously don't want to be near you or around you? And then number two, why are you setting this expectation that you're going to get picked when you know probably 99% that you're not? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know. And she's like, you got to get out of this like victim mentality and just learn to live in a constant state of like, there will be ups and there will be downs, but you can't always live in either one. Yeah. I'm all for mental health, but you got to find the right therapist. And sometimes it takes a few. What do you think someone to look for in like looking for the ideal therapist? To me, I like when someone tells me their opinion. I know everyone's different. Like if, if I have a therapist that's like, Natalie, like you're being delusional about this. No, you're wrong. I like that because I feel like I need to be snapped out of things sometimes or I'll have irrational anxieties. But there's also a line where you want them to listen to you and be more open-minded to your feelings. I mean, I think it really just comes down to how do you feel about talking to them. Mm -hmm. Like when I met my therapist, I met her seven years ago at the Institute for psychology and something in Columbus Circle huh. and it's because I couldn't afford a therapist and they do like this grading scale of therapy and so uh, I met her through an intake session I knew automatically I was like I can talk to this woman I know I was like there's something about her that I can talk to her about and we had chatted about there. We had chatted about insurance, and she's like, "I'm sorry, I can't take you. You know, you may want to find someone else. You're just not in my bracket of what I can take." And I was like, "Oh, all right." But I kept her card. And in 2020, I was going through a very tough time. I had no friends. All my friends were in relationships. I had nothing. I was very down. I wasn't really in comedy. I kind of was just alone a lot. Mm -hmm. And it was very like sad. And my friend Trent was like, girl, you need therapy. <laughs> Find a therapist. And I was like, the only person that I can talk to is this woman. So I went looking for her card. I found her card, because I kept it. Yeah. I found her card after looking for like two hours. I called her, I sent her an email, I was like, please, I need your help. I'm in a very dark place. What can you do? So she emailed me back and she's like, let's jump on the phone, let's talk it through. And so we jumped on the phone and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's you. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you. I'm so depressed. Do you think I should go on medication? And she's like, no. Really? 
She's like, let's hold off on that. Let's try and see if we can talk some of these things through. And you know, she saved my life. Aww. Yeah, she really did. Cause I was, you know, I was, it was not good. And, but thank goodness for her. So that's why I'm, I know people are always like pussies about, you know, mental health. But I'll tell you this, if Tony Soprano from the Sopranos <laughs> can go to a therapist, so can you. So I don't I don't know if this is a bit you do or something I just heard you say on stage once. But when you said that when you were a kid you wanted to be a mobster's wife, I lost my shit. Oh yeah, I've always I have always wanted to. I Is this was, a joke you do or did I just hear you say this? Once? No, it's it's a joke but it's yeah. also the truth. It is I when you said I brought it up late like you know those jokes you bring up later in conversation you're like Oscar said you want to be a I was dying. I, always wanted to be an Italian mobster's wife. I swear to God, I wanted the big fucking mansion. I want the big hair. I want the big, I want the big fucking jewelry, the Cadillacs outside. I, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to be that bitch. Yeah. Always. You weren't like, oh, he's going to fuck other girls and I'm going to be, or I might nah, die. No, because he's always going to come back to me. Really? Yeah, he's going to always come back to me. So you don't care? I don't fucking care. Are you possessive? Am I possessive? A little bit. Yeah. Because I have this mentality that if I'm like, bitch, if I'm putting in 100% into this relationship, you better be damn well sure you're going to be putting in 100% as well. Right. Because if not, you're in fucking trouble. <laughs> Now you're the mobster. <laughs> yeah, now I'm the mobster. No, but I've always, there's a few things. I wanted to be a pilot. Oh, I, I died. I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to be a female model. When you said, I and wanted. And then an Italian mobster's wife. You go, I want to be an Italian mobster's wife or a kindergarten teacher. And I died. <laughs> yeah. Those two options are so amazing. I When I was a kid, I wanted to either be, I wanted to be a scientist slash ballerina slash taxi driver. Yeah. I want to drive my parents around. That's, I'm so that. cute. Because I love driving. I know. I mean, I <laughs> I feel I like, I don't know why I liked the idea of driving other people around. It was probably come from a nurturing side. Yeah. 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 Well, and the president I want to be as well. A president? I want to be a president, ballerina, scientist, taxi driver. Well, you can still be a scientist. Because you can still go back to college. Yeah. And get a degree. I can't tell you how many people I met who are comics who are like, oh yeah, I'm also a data scientist. Oh yeah, I'm also like a, you know, I have a master's in psychology. And I'm like, why? What are you doing? I know. Go make money. <laughs> you nuts. You silly boy. You silly goose. And then they have like 400,000 followers on, you know, Instagram. But that's, you know, I digress. Um, it's that time, yeah. so I like to pull a card from an oracle or a tarot deck. I I don't know what I was feeling, to, so I collect them too. Are you are you familiar with this? Do you know how to read cards? So these are not tarot cards; they're oracle cards. So they're all different. What's the oracle? Card? Oracle is like it's kind of to the discretion of the artist how many cards, what the cards mean. Whereas tarot cards are seventy six, and every deck has like the same yeah. cards. Are you very familiar with the oracle cards? So I have a deck at home, a tarot deck that's like I've put a lot of energy into. Yeah. But then I also have like 50 decks that I've just like collected and not super familiar with every deck. Right. But do you feel like you're confident in your oracle abilities? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I am. All right. We'll see how this goes. So I not like I'm not questioning her like ah, ah but I always get like nervous because you know. Oh. Well. Also. You know, when I yeah. Go ahead. When I read a card, I kind of say like, what do I need to hear today? So that's kind of like the question that I ask, like, what do I need to hear right now? And sometimes that's like, so if, if it's negative, sometimes like maybe I need to be paying attention to the negative things. Doesn't mean something negative is coming, but yeah, it means like. That's my always fear. Yeah, yeah. I will say this, if you have anybody has a chance, I want you to watch the documentary on Miss Cleo. Have you seen it? No. I am, I'm here by telling everybody, all your listeners, how many listeners do you? You have a lot of you. Sure. 
I don't know. You have a lot. She has a lot. I know you have a lot. Well, everybody that's listening, you have to watch the Miss Cleo documentary. Really? Yeah, it is phenomenal, especially for you. Okay, if you're into yeah, like the cards it. and everything, watch it tonight. What is it on? No, it's on Hulu. I, uh, okay, I'll Watch it on Hulu. You're gonna, I think it's on Hulu or Netflix, but watch it. When I tell you, you're gonna be amazed. Really? I cried at the end. I, so I don't like watching dark things at all. And it's not right. dark. It's not? It's not dark. Okay. It's very lighthearted, but it's sad though. At the end, like, I watched yesterday, we were on a plane that day, yesterday, and then I went home and Dan wanted to watch the fucking MH370 Netflix documentary, which was about the missing plane in Malaysia. Yeah. That was so sad. So okay. I this is not that I sad. could and and he fell asleep halfway through. I'm up high on my mind. Like I need to know what happens. They just still don't know what happened. It's so depressing when you were on a plane that day. It's so much more visceral. And I, oh my god, I was like, I was I was like this was too much for me. I don't know. I have to fly every every month. How am I gonna? You'll be fine. Oh, that documentary is. Sad. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I but, stay but the Cleo. but the Miss Cleo documentary, you gotta watch it. Yeah, it's so good. I'm excited. Yeah, we'll watch it tonight. Yeah. All right. So I have two options of decks for you. Like whenever I pick a deck for someone, so I want the a, Oracle. A, a lovely listener, um, Sundance Cassie brought this to my show in Texas, Mystic Sisters. Yeah. And this one is from my mom. It's Dogs Against Anxiety. I love your mom, but I want the Oracle deck. Okay, cool. <laughs> I love you, Miss Cuomo, but I want the Oracle deck. Okay, let's see. Now, do you... I do a little shuffle. Shuffle, and then I pick a card? Yes. One or how many? One card. Okay. Oh, I hope this goes good. I get nervous. Just think so about, good. you know, think positively. I get nervous about this stuff. I know. It's nothing to be nervous about. Are you okay if I just check my work real quick? Oh, please, okay. please. But I'm putting positive energy. I mean, your work energy, it's probably going to be a card about work. Just kidding. You know, I did something crazy, Oscar. I made an appointment for a Manny Petty after this. Ooh! Between now and my hosting, so I was like, what am I going to do? Where is it? It is um, on 12th and 4th. Oh my god, that's far down. Oh, well, that's near the stand. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm very, very... I gotta go do uh, Shiba Mason's show. Oh, what time is that? 8.30. Okay. So, I'm like, it's 6 o'clock. Do I go home and then come all the but way back But you live right up? here. I live in Chelsea. Yeah. That's... Yeah, so maybe I'll just do like a little putz around, you yeah. know, TJ Maxx or something oh, like that. Oh my, that's yeah. not convenient. I know, it's hard, right? Wow. All right. I, after last night, I'm like, oh. I appreciate being alive. Oh. Um, all right, all right, Oscar. Oh, I get so nervous about this. It, it, okay. It's okay, man. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. Okay. Y G N U S. I don't know what that means. First of all, I thought you said six. I thought I said that too, and I was you were like, like, "No, please, what? no more, no more." Now, Oscar, will you do me the honors? It, wow. Oh no, is it bad? You know what? No, it's not bad. Wait, do you want to read it? Ugh. Will you read it out loud? Sickness. Sickness. Keywords: release, surrender. Swans symbolize the transformation of the soul and release of matter into pure spirit because swans are adept on moving on land, on water, and through the air. In ancient times, they were believed to be messengers of the gods that carried souls away. It is said that swans only sing once in their lives, when they are about to die. Hence, a swan song has the meaning of a person's last piece of creative work and final performance. Drawing the card of sickness tells you it is time to gracefully release something, of something, a beloved idea or person you have held close to your heart. You may have already reached this conclusion. If not, this card may give you a gentle push to let go with grace and honor. Wow. Does that resonate with you at all? I mean, maybe like my old self? Yeah, I mean, I feel like... 
Can I pick another card? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My back card. All right, redo. No. But I do think that, like, there is a part of me that's like, I have to release my old self. Yeah, and, like, you're, they're definitely, I have, personally, I feel like I have negative um, thought cycles that I need yeah. to let go of. Like, yeah. I was so happy in Arizona, and I had, I was like, I'm anxious that I'm not anxious right now. Like, yeah. this is weird. Yeah, I felt like that the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, I just have to let go of all the, like, the, the, everything that I've been feeling, like the old me is not that person anymore. I yeah. can't live in the world of expectations. Someone said once, like, every opportunity, every minute is like a new opportunity to show who you are yeah. and to start over. And yeah. It feels liberating to me to think things That's that true. way. That's true. Okay, we're going to do... Oh, boy. Here. Did you put the Cygnus back, by the way? I did. Oh, I if did. I get this card again. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is like a sleepy lady, Thea. All right, let's look her up. It's exactly more, more sickness and Thea. Let's see. Okay. Do you want me to a read her? Yes, no, please. Oh, this no. is good. This is good. Thea. Thea is the goddess of sight and heavenly light. Oh, oh keywords: illumination and psychic visions. Your intuitive insight is attempting to contact your conscious attention. Put to your, put to use your tools that will best enable you to interpret these symbols. Meditate and reflect. Try to recall your dreams by journaling. Some quiet solitude is in order. Thea is the goddess of blue sky, and with her gift of crystal clear vision, she reminds you of your intuitive gifts and how they must be attended to. Okay. I like that. All right. What do you think would come? Like I was noticing that today. Like I was putting on makeup without music or without being on the phone. And then I was like, ah, oh, there are my thoughts. <laughs> like, I, I'm like, there they are. Every day I'm paddling with them. So. Uh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, what, is there something intuitive that you feel it's been tugging on your heartstrings? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Nothing what did really. we discuss? We discussed a lot of things. We did. Um, now, I don't know. just for you know, we have a minute left, but just just for fun, let's 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 give a joy. Let's do it for your mother. For mom. The dogs against anxiety. Now that is, oh, this is that's not, this is a nice deck. Okay, good. I like a nice deck. So those two, you know, we can really let them linger around in our thoughts. Think about what we take from them. But today, you know, we're just gonna. I don't know which side is up and which is down on this. All right. All I'm gonna right. pick from this side. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> it's okay to be scared. Okay. Sing along. Make time today to listen to a few of your favorite songs somewhere private. Give it your full attention and sing along in your head. Notice how the music affects your body and mind. Well, that's cute. I, I like love that. that. Good job, Mrs. Cuomo. Good job. I mean, I, I want if I get another dog, I want a husky Pomeranian mix. I kind of want to pull another Oracle card. Uh, one of these? Yeah. Oh, he's addicted. Can pull one more. Let's do it. This one or this one? No, this one. Let's okay. do it. All right. Real quick. We got two minutes. And where can people find you, Oscar? People can find me on. Instagram, it's ITS Oscar Aiden, A Y D I N. If you just put in Oscar A Y, my name automatic, automatically comes up. And then also on TikTok, it's just Oscar Aiden. And then my podcast, O Oscar, O H Oscar, O S C A R, it's on Spotify, iTunes, all the streaming platforms. I love it. Yeah, and follow me on Instagram if you like me. I gotta push that. Go follow Oscar. Yeah, you've been killing it on Instagram. I've been so bad. No. All right, I'm going to pull from here right now. Oh, shit, I lost it. What do we got? Aphrodite. It's funny because that's got to be love. That's got to be love. Right? Aphrodite. Isn't Aphrodite the goddess of love? Let's see. We got one more. All right. It is fitting for the nail salon, I think. Aphrodite. Passion, beauty, desire. <sighs> The goddess Aphrodite bodes well with your direct experience of love, charm, and your eye for the beauty. Aphrodite enhances awareness of your personal aesthetic pleasures. 
She heightens a desire for love, whether it's between you and your partner, or perhaps an increase of love in your heart towards yourself and everything you delight in. To be in the right space to experience the gifts of Aphrodite, it is necessary to fully it is necessary to be fully present in the moment, and you must believe that you are truly worthy of love. Drawing this card is a call to open your heart, forgive transgressions by yourself and your loved ones, and to position yourself to receive and give love more fully. Oh. It's the gayest deck of cards I've ever. <laughs> I love. I love it the last good. one. It is it's good. It's like a. It's a thought massage. I, I do like, like that. That's interesting. Oh, that's a nice thing to hear. Yeah. Thanks heart. for having me yes. on your podcast. Thanks for doing it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye.